This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here from our tropical exotic, this time Kapahulu, Honolulu Paradise. And uh, we're going down to the straight core of the show, which is human humane. And we're going to stay at home in our hood. And for that, we have Eileen and John here. Welcome for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. And our hood is, if we can get the first picture, <laughs> is in sort of the, the conflict that we have on the islands is that, for example, my partner, Suzanne, hi Suzanne, she loves nature. And next picture, I love architecture. So there's this inherent conflict that, especially here on our sort of small islands, we pretty much have. And our hood is right sort of in the, in the hinge of that. I would like to say. And so, yeah, the next picture shows it from, from a mapping point of view. And this is our hood of, uh, of Kapahulu here. And, uh, but way nicer portrayed is the next picture. This is Eileen, how you sort of uh, make us see the hood. And there's another conflict between Suzanne and myself that she loves more sort of literal art and a lot of more abstract art. So you're the perfect mitigator and moderator between mm. <laughs> the two of us in many ways. But before we go sort of home, we want to go on a little journey where you guys come from. And we're going to start with uh, where, where you come from, John. And so let's walk up to where that is and that will be the next picture. Where is that? It's on an island in northwest Washington, mm -hmm. it's about 15 miles below the Canadian border. And that, the star, stairway is probably about 100 years old, but still holding up. And uh, it used to be a cannery, a salmon fishing cannery. Mm -hmm. And it was purchased by my parents in 1938. Mm -hmm. And you said, and what, like 86 steps or something like that? 83 steps. 83, yeah. and it goes to the outhouse, right? Well, no, it, it, the outhouse is down in, in the bottom. OK. There is a cabin at the bottom, the old okay. cabin. Uh -huh. And then at the top of the stairs is a newer house from the 1980s. OK. And uh, we live in both, basically. Mm -hmm. But the one below is at, at ocean level on the beach. It's one of the rare places on this island where mm -hmm. the, the meadow Mm -hmm. goes directly through the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it, it must have been a campground from pre, you know, prehistoric times mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for anybody mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. So we're still there. And, and while we walk up, which will be the next picture, um, this reminds me of my urban experience that where I grew up, we had 96 steps up and down oh, to yeah. everything. It was a, a five-story walk up, no elevator, nothing. Uh -huh. And our neighbor from way back, she just turned 100. Hmm. As I hear your your dad, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, there's something about staying fit, and you guys the are are the best. <laughs> and you guys either run or you surf. You're big surfers, and we'll get to that later or soon, right? And the show is called Exotic uh, Enclaves. <clears throat> so we we're talking about real estate and sort of. There's a French word immobilier, so mm -hmm. it means like real estate. It's a way more poetic term for that, right? Yeah. It means something that's not mobile, you know, immobile. So these are all rather sort of nondescript, rather gritty uh, places, right? Sure. Well, surfers consider the wave to be the real estate. <laughs> and sometimes it gets pretty vicious. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this, this house, the cabin, that's, that's a 100-year-old cabin there. And uh, still holding up pretty well. Mm-hmm. My nephew came to visit, and he was trying to get a beer out of the refrigerator, and his foot went through the floor. So we had a little repair. <laughs> so it's it's doing okay. Doing okay. As long so, as you can still put it back together. And the, the view we see on the next picture, and this is how you most likely uh, like to be dressed, which I appreciate a lot because this is the easy breezy way. We had a hard time making you wear a shirt here today because you're just like, well, why, is, why yeah. would we in the tropics, right? No, but in northwest Washington, you're talking about very rare, a mm -hmm. month or so in the summer where you can act as though mm -hmm. this this is somewhere in the tropics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not, no longer the tropics. And, and go to your next step. And actually, we have to say that all these places you're still uh, associated with and still going. So this isn't like, OK, one after another. These are all accumulating and yeah. parallel. And the next one we go to, the next picture, is traces back to 
You went a little south from there, and this is where you're from. Yeah, this Eileen, is Laguna right? Beach, California. I mean, from California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is where Eileen's, basically, her native base is right there in Irvine, and this Suburbia. is my home of going on 60 years in Laguna Beach. So mm -hmm. this is the real old footprint, mm -hmm. except the prior one in Washington, which is even older. Mm -hmm. But we don't live there full time. This mm -hmm. place was a full time resident, and that's my studio in the, the greenhouse. And, and some people yeah. would say, well, when is the architecture coming? Where is the architecture, right? We go to the next picture. These are like another term we yeah. can maybe use most respectfully. I mean, I mean it as cabanas, right? Yeah, everyone in Laguna says this is like a Hawaiian house. Mm -hmm. Well, basically it's a single wall house, meaning you can look through the cracks. There you go. And see the ocean. And you can breathe through them, too. Yeah, and the, and the, the basic uh, airflow is quite constant, although you can close it because in the wintertime you have storms, but the, my solution was the windows leak, so I just put roll curtains on a diagonal outside the window, and mm -hmm. they cost, what, 50 bucks. Very and, and the whole place stays dry all winter. Yeah. And that actually gets me to the point that also um, the major stuff in your, in your, in your place is, is repurposed, is reclaimed. Right. I mean, Entirely. I didn't put it. I don't know yeah. if this is the Persian carpet. You had well, another per picture. Persian rug came out of a dumpster on Kapahulu. Actually. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's local. That poor guy. <laughs> I think he got divorced and he just threw all these things. And these mm -hmm. are fifteen hundred dollar minimum yeah. rugs. Yeah. Uh huh. Just threw them in the dumpster. Yeah. And we, if we would all do that, our carbon footprint would shrink because we stop making new stuff. Yeah. We can all share what we already well, have. The, right. The, the uh, thrift stores are burgeoning with stuff, mm -hmm. and they're getting mm -hmm. more and more filled with the turnover. So, mm -hmm. and even the upper class now shops there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see the cars. And there is another place here, which if Ray can also zoom on to the to the book that we have here, which is basically a surfer magazine here, the Surfer Journal, and has an article about um, you guys and and the letters and the places and a perfect portrait um, sort of image of, of that next place here, which if we get the next uh, picture as well, this is what we're looking at uh, out, of, out of these windows here. So where's this that? Is, this is the, the basic concept of an open house. It was actually copied after a cattle, a cow barn, mm -hmm. a dairy cow barn. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a 360 degree round house mm -hmm. with uh, two, two stories. And the center story is actually open and draws the air up from under the, the, the surrounding mm -hmm. e eaves of the roof and make, continues to cause an, a, a circular mm -hmm. airflow. And, and once again, perfectly portrayed by you, Eileen, which you can see on the next picture. Oh, yeah. Very. And, and this is, if we can get the next picture, Ray. Uh, I mean, this is for me, I mean, this is easy breezy, this is tropical, this is exotic, this is erotic, this is where I want to be. Yeah. I mean, if I look at that, I'm just like, wow. If no air conditioning. <laughs> no, no necessary. No. You don't need it, really. It's, it's natural. Everybody else is pretty much air conditioned, but not yeah. us. Yeah. And I mean, this always is so like, I mean, just did a tour with the students to some new classrooms they're building on, on New Asia, I call it Frog House, and it's so much about technology, mm. but this is about the absence of it. I mean, this is about us as human beings and feeling things and, and still allowing us to feel, and this is like more staying away from technology, right? Yeah, well, I think that would be the highest form of technology. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the natural systems. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. I don't and, know if you, if you did look, look up coastline Community College mm -hmm. and check that out because mm -hmm. it's got open open yeah. walls. So yeah, it's pretty no, interesting. that's good. So after sort of having seen some of the other places, we come home. This is homecoming now. We get to the next picture, and here we are again. And tell us a little bit about your your approach when you do this fabulous. Um, um, well, first of all, I I would not be able to set my easel in front of or in the middle of Kapahulu to actually paint this. Mm -hmm. So while he's driving, I've got my iPhone out here mm -hmm. and I'm snapping a bunch of shots and whatever, you know, because there's a whole bunch of repetitive shots, but whatever looks best is mm -hmm. what I pick or what looks most dramatic. Mm -hmm. 
and I know makes a good painting. That's the bicycle shop? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Top of Hulu, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's where and the corner of Zippies and... Yeah, where Irifune, the though, turns, they, yeah. they just demolished the interior next door. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So, yeah. so it's our hood, yeah. and it's, uh, we just, we, we forgot it, I forgot it, but so the Bicky kind of bicycle renting thing has a new right. card out that has sort of color code yeah. of the different neighborhoods. And, you know, there's like the, the city that's purely for vacationing, which is called Waikiki, and there's a city that's purely for dwelling on a luxurious, that's called Kaka'aka, although people are defending that, so we're mixed use, we don't believe that, at least not to the terms we understand Eight mixed towers. use. Yeah. Exactly, and then there is the city of, of working exclusively, this is where we're broadcasting from, and ours is color-coded green, thanks to the people, and ours is actually the only inclusive neighborhood that yeah. does everything at the same time, right? And so if we uh, walk to the next picture, this is how we got to know each other, because I was parking my car in these side streets here, and at a certain point I'm going through this street, which I can't that easily because it's gated off, which we'll get to what the quality of that is. And all of a sudden there is like the absence of architecture. And I think if you achieve that, as you said with your El Salvador house, where it's not about the architecture, it's about the nature. And architecture is just facilitating us appreciating mm -hmm. and indulging in it. So I didn't see a house, <laughs> but I saw someone sitting there. You know, there was a there was a dweller, and so um, next picture is when I finally sort of chatted you up. Um, I, I took this panoramic oh, yeah. with a plano oh. function, and this is the whole scenario. This is basically you. I mean, Eileen, you hadn't been coming around the corner yet. It was just us basically opening up the discussion. Well, I think I mentioned the patient seems to be part of this uh, jungleism, you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I planted those two trees because the neighbor cut his trees down before we bought the property. Mm -hmm. And here it was very exposed mm -hmm. and especially hot you know, mm -hmm. because afternoon sun there yep. is, is a killer. So I, I knew we had to have some shade. So once I got a viable seedling from Kauai, this is the avocado, the nearest to the camera. And then I got a seed from my neighbor's uh, piri tree. Which and we can both, show the next they picture. They were both sprouting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So since they were sprouting, I stuck them in the ground. Yeah. And then you have to be patient. But uh, this is only 10, 15 years total mm -hmm. later. So if, if you've got 15 years, go for it. You know, put in a tree. Mm -hmm. I always say if you're going to retire, plant a tree. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it'll keep you busy also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are leaves. You have leaves every day. Mm -hmm. You have to rake the leaves and you... Yeah, and you also and, prune your trees and do yeah. that. And, and you and me, not sort of not knowledgeable enough. You told me about the different species, and then this is the best one, and and this it carried many years. Yeah. And then uh, you know you're doing <coughs> this here again, so it's like evolving around nature. I mean, this is your. You were talking about. I always used to say decorative green, but you had you had ornamental as the term, right? Oh, sure. Usually we don't do that. We we grow stuff that we can't eat. And if you think about it, why do we do that? And you had an interesting kind of political uh, well, um, it, it conspiracy theory Well, it happened earlier when the, the town, the people who could afford to move to town, uh, they didn't want to have flies, which, you know, the farm, they didn't want to bring the farm with them. Mm -hmm. So they, they basically plant ornamentals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't plant fruit trees. They don't mm -hmm. plant food. Mm -hmm. So let's go... Um, four to one picture, uh, this phrase is to the avocado tree, which we had the sort of um, sort of shared serendipity yeah. experience because me only a week before when I was on my way to lunch at school up at UH and was checking on my car, if it's still there, I was thinking what I'm going to eat for lunch and I wasn't sure and then I must have visualized this here as being my lunch because it dropped right in front of my feet and I just went home, got salt and a spoon, and this was my most delicious lunch. And so you have a similar story about how your tree came about, your avocado tree. Well, that was, my niece was watering avocados on Kauai over mm -hmm. there in, in uh, Kilauea. And uh, my daughter went to visit her, and she came back with a big avocado. And she happened to leave it in my house. I was in California. When I came back, I thought it was a rotten avocado. I was going to throw it away. Cut it in half. It was perfect. 
butter avocado. Just like my one. And the, mm -hmm. But the seeds, I didn't notice your seeds sprouting, but mm -hmm. my seed mm -hmm. already had two trunk yeah. branches and mm -hmm. a bunch of roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that one, I had to stick that in the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's how we got our avocado. And we're coming in and, and running into Jay, he, as he's a master provocateur, he was saying, oh, you're going to talk about human-humane architecture. Are you also going to talk about uh, the ones for the ones who can't afford it at all? Mm -hmm. And this is our next picture here, which, um, Eileen, why don't you tell us who that is? Oh, this guy's name, am I allowed to name names? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. We're allowed yeah. to say anything here. Okay, Dan Devine, he's homeless, but John originally met him, which is right down the street. Oh, that, that's <laughs> the not gas a big station. deal. He just... He wanders that area, and but we can't John, say where he lives because I think he's not supposed to be there. But mm -hmm. at at times, so he comes around. And he, but he was a very big name mm -hmm. uh, sports photographer. Mm -hmm. He worked for Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. He was a stringer for a lot of different magazines, shooting mm -hmm. America's Cup race in New mm -hmm. Zealand and stuff. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. after all those years, ended up uh, pretty much off. I think off the. Yeah. Road. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to get into po political things that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's too bad what he had. To, he got uh, into trouble with the police once. Then he ends up on social services. Then they get to withhold his social security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah we where should, does that money go? That's we, what I'd we, like we know. should talk about these things. I don't know. I mean, you need a so, good lawyer to talk, find out. Yeah. Well, Jay again. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, and he so wants to talk about it. He gets he's about two thousand dollars a month, but he gets two hundred dollars mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a week. Wow. Mm -hmm. So where that money's gone for some years now. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe twenty, thirty thousand yeah. dollars sitting in an account. Mm -hmm. Where the hell is who who has that? And and I think the reason why 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 you engage in these discussions and thoughts is because of your living style, your dwelling style, because you're out there on the street, on your street, and you engage with these people and we talk about money and as a means to buy something, for example, food, you know, mm -hmm. how about we would actually, there's this term, the low-hanging fruit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, why do we take this literal and we mandate, I mean, after the, you know, at this point, I'm already going to say, if I would have to, something to say here and would be on some kind of planning boards or have some kind of political power, I would say I mandate what you guys did, plant a, a mango tree, an avocado tree, and you also had banana that you wanted to give me one, and I look forward to that on the way back. Why don't we do that? And, and then, you know, the people who are in needs can basically feed themselves, plus the ones who visit us can all of a sudden see that, that fruit that they only know from the grocery store in real, and they can pick it or at least look at it. I mean, how, how cool would that be? Yeah, if you can share it, um, the, the biggest argument or it's not an argument, the biggest critique is just that density is what makes things possible or impossible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once you reach a certain density, you can't have enough people to share mm -hmm. enough things. You mm -hmm. can't get enough shares. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There aren't enough shares for everything. So how do you orchestrate that? I mean, well, I've already run into that for some years now about surfing. Mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. How do you share those waves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's some real, yeah, yeah, yeah. real problems going on with yeah, sharing yeah. those waves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in, in architecture, there's a new trend, so to speak, that's called urban ecology. And you ask, can we do what you guys do on a multi-level, which our most activist journalist, Kurt Sandburn, called Stacklinize? And yes, yeah. you can. You can sure. bring in soil, and you can bring in perlite, and you can grow stuff of significance and basically make your whole building like a stack greenhouse and live in the jungle on sort of a stratospheric kind of way, sure. right? Mm -hmm. But let's pour a little bit of bad water into this kind of delicious wine we're drinking here. We're not, but we should, but sort of, uh, sort of uh, spiritually, and go to the next picture because what happens just around the corner is the opposite. Well, the... Uh the, the single wall is gone, and you, you're the one who pointed out that the, they've adopted the California Code for building, and that this is all hermetically sealed stuff, you know, because you, you put in air conditioning, you, you keep, uh, you neutralize the surrounding atmosphere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and put your own, you're in control. So basically it's a control yeah. system. Yeah. Everybody wants control, and that and more and more what everybody's life, children used to grow up and have as zones where they were not in, mm -hmm. in a controlled zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, when I was a kid, you know, and, and beach communities are supposed to offer that still. There's 180 degrees that's not private property. That's why you find a lot of homeless guys down at the beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of the little bandits are down at the mm -hmm. beach. Mm -hmm. And everybody can be there. All yeah. in the same zone. You go and down and walk along Waikiki. And so this it is. It's the biggest mix you've ever yeah. seen in your life. And so it is, and I, when I just picked you up, you had a bunch of friends out there with kids, and yeah. they were just roaming around and having fun. And That's the benefit you know, of having I mean, a gate across. There's no automobile traffic. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the secret there. Three mm -hmm. mayors ago, four mayors ago, he says, how can we solve this cut-through traffic mm -hmm. every afternoon, every mm -hmm. morning? Mm -hmm. So we'll put up a few gates. Those are private lanes. Those, mm -hmm. aren't, those aren't streets, you know. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of those are extended. Yeah. Uh, driveways, yeah, yeah. where they put the Ohana house behind the other house, yeah, and yeah. they run their driveways together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those things you could block them again, just like we have. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody would be very. And, and well this up. is actually at that corner of your street. And then, unfortunately, we have one more, and it gets worse, which is the next picture, because this is at the other yeah, well, side of the block. Now this guy took that single-family thing to the extreme. There's 13 bathrooms in there. Mm. And there's, mm -hmm. I think, eight units on each side upstairs and eight on each side mm -hmm. downstairs. Mm -hmm. This is strictly for Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he just picked a location that he thought was viable, yeah. bought the lot, and he does, I don't make it a discriminatory thing, discriminatory, but it's strictly bottom line building. Yeah. If that's what building's about. Yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully but, not. But you just, because this is about the presence of a building that we don't want. Everything you said so perfectly, you should teach at my school. This is yeah. hermetic. This is invasive. If we get close, I didn't want to because I found it even too disgusting. I didn't want to waste a digital picture. Even this is vinyl siding that has yeah. the imprint of wood. I mean, yeah. this is the epitome well, of anything. And the other one, at least, you were even talking to the people and saying, save these few trees, which we saw. There is nothing left. And this was a pretty idyllic sort of one-story ranch home. Yeah. But you've got to realize that the simple basic argument, which you will get every time, mm -hmm. is all these things are academic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all money. It's yeah. all about yeah. the dollar. We, what are you going to do? You're not going to yeah. get away from the dollar. That's I mean, what everybody's focused on because it's the only linear yeah, yeah. thing to measure your yeah, values. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's going to get the best dollar. <laughs> All right. Well, so let's pick do? our spirit yeah. up again with the yeah. next picture, which I took from the old house that's still there on the other side of that street. And this is a detail that I think yeah. fits perfectly with last week's show, which was about pretty much the architecture versus architecture. And this is just the texture of plants and similar texture of wood slats, you know, that, that shade and, and give privacy to that. Sure. You can and, interview that guy. You know, he used to have a big gallery here in town. Uh-huh. Abac Abacus. Okay. okay. Abacus. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And so he, so this is this is an inspiration for a project we did some years ago here, uh, which is the next picture, which is sort of rethinking. Actually, this was for DHHL to how rethink how the locals live. And not having to buy these sort of rip-off track homes, they're basically sort of American stick frame, hermetic, and AC. And we just came up with sort of this kit of part, four pavilions around outdoor spaces. Sure. And the next picture is, is showing sort of in this sort of green diagram that on the top is what you conventionally, you do plop this big McMansion on a lot, and then you end up with these leftover spaces, whereas the very bottom one is basically this concept. So that even then, next picture in uh, the, the places and spaces between the homes, um, you create this communicational, you know, shaded, vegetated spaces and places. And next picture on the street, it's exactly what you guys are doing. Uh, you hang out in your house and not being not inside of the house. You're in the carport. You're in the lanai. You're out on the streets, and this is pretty much sure. and if along it's open, the same lines. Any, anybody who has the curiosity is going to stick their head in and say, what's going on Exactly, here? exactly. Well, that's what breaks the ice. Yeah. What really breaks the ice it, is anybody who's willing to just push the envelope a little bit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everybody's there. I mean, mm -hmm. you, there's a place in Irvine where she grew up, and they made this perfect park mm -hmm. with lights and toy, you know, mm -hmm. jungle gyms yeah. and everything yeah. else. And I used to drive there commuting from teaching, mm -hmm. and it was like after dinner, all the lights are on in this perfectly groomed park mm -hmm. for children. Mm -hmm. There's not a soul in there. Mm -hmm. And right next to it is all the rubble. Yeah, the, the real rubble. But it's a triangle of, yeah, of yeah. trash. The gritty. And it was filled 
out with exactly. kids. Exactly. That's what you want. I mean, this gets you exciting. You can explore. Well, nobody, it's nobody's property. Exactly. But all that other stuff was just a manicured yeah. idea. It was off well, of somebody, unfortunately, a drawing board. It was off a drawing yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, of course. Somebody sold it to the, the master plan. To the city. And get to the next picture. I mean, this is everything you perfectly described also applies to you guys. I mean, yeah. this is basically the gritty. This is the real life. This is free claim, this is free purpose, but this is also purposely vegetated. I mean, this is, this is the whole deal. And we want to conclude with a final piece of artwork by Eileen that I basically captioned here and calling it um, Making America Talk Again. of art is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, just uh, having fun, painting t-shirts, um, yeah. speeding up the process exactly. of drawing it, and um, I don't know, you can she, talk. She you draws can, at the drop of a hat. Meaning <laughs> but, behind but it, whatever fun, the meaning you know, is. But <laughs> I think, yeah, the spirit of fun is the primary issue, mm -hmm. and whoever can maintain that, you know, is going to get Everybody on on board. You yeah. know, everybody's I mean, into it. Yeah. So I, you don't want to get to the point. I say, if we're all sit behind our hermetic sealed walls and we watch at the TV, is it Fox or CNN, whatever? We get to where we are right now in society. Mm -hmm. But if we're out on the streets and we talk to each other and yeah. we sort of we respectfully yeah. provoke each other mm -hmm. and get discussions going, which you do with your great artwork, I mm -hmm. think this is the way and this is the future for our culture and and the country and. Mm -hmm. With that, we're at the end of the show, and I yeah. thank you so much for having been guests. This is more than thank fun. You. Really well, talk. Great fun. Yeah. We should we should do another <laughs> one because there's so much more. You just brought letters with drawings of oh, yours, sure. and, and Jay uh, said this is another show. So well, I we didn't to. know you had that kind of range here. <laughs> we have. <laughs> All right, and until then, you guys stay happy and healthy, and please consider to make some more um, exotic enclaves as Eileen and John do. So see you next week. Bye bye.